So, you just joined Anime Souls for the first time, and you're probably wondering, what's the best way to grind, because there's like 30 worlds in the game at the moment. And maybe after completing World 1 and World 2, you're starting to realize that grinding through these worlds take quite a lot of time. But look no further, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best ways of progression regarding the early game. And if you aren't early game, don't worry, this is a part 1 of 2 series, the next video will be for late game players but obviously today i'm going to start with the early game players also if this guy does end up helping you why not drop a like and sub to show your support because it really helps out a lot and why not do it you know support your favorite youtuber and even if i'm not your favorite youtuber why not just show your support for the tutorial but then there is enough of that let's jump right into this so as i said before let's say you just joined anime souls for the first time you're probably thinking the first thing that you should start doing is working on the quest line well i disagree what you actually should be doing is using a bunch of codes so then you can roll skills until you get a mythical one and how do you get spins you may ask well i'm gonna have a few codes on the screen right now but probably there's too many of them to fit all on one screen so i'm gonna have all of them in the description so go check them out down there and once you're done using them you should have quite a large amount of skill spins and now that you have the spins you shouldn't just immediately say, oh, there's a mythical, okay, let's just put on auto spin, let's put on mythical only, and then start spinning. No. Because some mythical spins are better than the other. Now, currently, at the moment, the best ones in the game are either this one, the spinning slash. This one doesn't do the most damage, but if I'm not mistaken, it is the fastest. If you completely want the one that does the most damage, then you want this double meteor, but keep in mind... It does have quite a long attack animation. But obviously starting off, I don't I doubt you're really gonna be complaining about what mythic skill you have. Just try and make sure that you have a mythic skill or at least a legendary one instead. Because in my opinion, from common to epic is just not worth it. And if you do, for example, end up getting, let's say, a legendary or you want something as like a backup in case you don't get it, you, there is a save point in the cave. There is a skills vault and you can have up to three skills, two saved in the vault and one equipped. So if you want to play it safe, just do that. Now let's just say you've spinned all your skill spins, you got a mythical or a legendary skill, now what? Well, for the first two worlds, in my opinion, just do the quest line normally, you know. Just grind the enemies, whatnot, get a little bit stronger, get better heroes, add the egg, and then obviously upgrade your classes, those are really important. If I'm not mistaken, at the start, like the very first few ranks, they aren't too expensive. So you should get them pretty quickly and they multiply both your energy and your souls. And the best way to do that, just look at the quest board, let's say it says kill 40 of these Krako dollies. Just kill them, you know, just AFK here, you're definitely not gonna one hit them at the start. But it's fine, just do this. When you have enough souls, go over there, upgrade your class, then come back, continue until you complete all the quests and you unlock the next world. Now once again, repeat the same process in the Leaf Village, just continue fighting enemies, get enough souls to rank up, and then obviously continue the quest line, and then Planet Nomak is where everything gets a little bit more important. Because as you can see over here, there are two important things, the primary swords and the shiny machine. Now the more important one of the bunch is definitely going to be the primary swords. Again, these are going to be offering multipliers towards your energy that are just going to be super helpful. For example, right now, this Dark Bat V2 gives me a 1.6 SX boost. And it's really been helping me out a bunch. Now, obviously, this is going to cost souls to upgrade. So you just want to implement it into your normal strategy. So just fight enemies, you know, continue the quest line. And then once you have enough souls, upgrade the primary swords, upgrade your class. And then hatch a little bit, you know, try getting a few of these immortal heroes or maybe the legendary at least instead. Because in my opinion, you shouldn't even bother for the commons, the epics. They're not worth it at all. But anyways, once you're done with this questline, you end up unlocking the Titan District, which has quite a lot of stuff to offer. Number one, it offers you the accessory merchants where you can sell accessories that you've gotten from defeating raid bosses if you have or ju just getting accessories in general and then you can sell them for coins which are going to be really useful later down in the game and you can upgrade your accessories for example this pink coat over here costs 93 coins let's say i want to upgrade it once there we go once it's been upgraded and it's important that you have a good accessory because for example this pink coat if we have a look at its stats 
Uh, it gives 10.5x souls, 30x energy, and 28x damage. Now, you were able to get this accessory for free back when the summer event was available, but now you can't get it. So obviously, try finding a better alternative to what you have at the moment, if you have any, because accessories are important. Now, the next thing is going to be the Swordmaster over here. Now, he isn't exactly that important when it comes to progression, but he is really good. Every single time you complete one of his quests, he's going to be giving you 5% extra swing speed. But his quests do take a while, which is kind of why I said there is not really that important, because you'll just be doing his quests passively. But I mean, I guess free extra swing speed is obviously going to be really helpful later down the line but it is going to take a really long time to complete so as i said don't focus too much time on it you'll do it automatically but do actually make sure that you start his quest line anyways now we move on to hunter city now hunter city doesn't really offer much the only thing that it really offers is the elite machine this is basically like the next tier above shiny so if you have like three shinies i believe it is no it's five shinies you can then turn it into one elite and obviously he's going to be much stronger but in my opinion you shouldn't really waste too much time on this because by the time you actually get a good team of elites you probably would have gone up like a world or two this machine is more for late game plays in my opinion just because i've never really needed like any higher tiers than shiny heroes because i always just go to the next world and then they get replaced immediately but if you want to do it i mean you can try doing it on maybe a rare or epic or something since you're probably going to be getting a bunch of those but in my opinion you won't really need it now the sings kingdom is where things get very very interesting now lots of stuff does actually happen here for example there's the crafting npc over here where you can craft skill spins passive rolls potions of practically everything and they're going to be costing runes which you can get from defense modes meteors raid bosses you can pretty much get them from anywhere, obviously except from defeating like normal enemies, like you can't just AFK on this guy for example and he's gonna drop one, no. But don't worry if you don't have any runes to craft anything because if you use the codes as I told you at the beginning of the video, it shouldn't, you should already have like a bunch of potions for example of literally each one and probably a bunch of skill spins and passive rolls. And in fact, these passive rows can actually be used right over here. Now heading over here, currently at the moment, you're going to see that I have this unique one. It is the 0.1% mythical one. But obviously, there's still a better one. The question mark, question mark, question mark. Don't ask his chances because no one knows. But trust me, do not even bother aiming for this until you're like at the very end of the game. In my opinion, what you should actually focus on is at least trying to get monster. But just for curiosity purposes, what the protagonist does, it practically does literally, it gives you everything really. Swing speed, energy, damage, souls, it gives you everything. Now I will put up a screenshot of what each passive does and like the maximum one because for example, if I'm not mistaken, Electra can come in like 1, 2 and 3. But obviously these cannot, so only these three. So yeah, just pause the video and have a look. But anyways, that's enough of passives and we move on to the slime forest. Now slime forest, there isn't really much you can do here because yes, the auras are really good. They give you multipliers for your energy, but they cost pink runes and at this point of the game, you probably don't have any and if you do you probably literally have like five or something like that depends how lucky you were when you were like going up against the meteors and whatnot so unfortunately there's not much you can really do here you could say that this world is kind of a dead one but that all changes once you unlock the chainsaw city because this is where you can actually grind pink runes now there is something called the defense mode where it's literally imagine it's like a tower defense type of game mode but you're the tower you have to afk or just stand still along the track and just defeat enemies and then they have a chance of dropping pink runes and many other things such as skill tokens passive rolls pretty much everything that you see over here can be dropped by them obviously except the defense tickets these two accessories and whatnot but obviously it is really tough to deal with i don't think you can actually handle wave one by yourself until like two or three worlds later so obviously try looking for someone to carry you just asking the server hey does anyone want to do a defense mode now the devil contracts in my opinion i never really focus too much on them because they usually cost a ton of coins and i'd rather save my coins for what's going to be coming up soon but if you do want to kind of spend some coins on these contracts then in my opinion the best one that you should focus on is this one the chainsaw devil contract yes it costs a bunch of coins but it gives you 132 
20% energy gain, which is amazing. But obviously, you're sacrificing 21% souls, so keep in mind of that. Now, from there, we move on to the Slayer Village. And again, over here, you just want to continue your normal strategy of completing the main quest line. But there are talents over here, and they cost 5 to spin every single time. Now, if you do have the coins, I would suggest don't try aiming for S+, plus because you're probably going to need a bunch more coins than what I have at the moment to get it, If you at least if your luck is bad. And even if you can't get S, I think the most important ones is getting 5 in energy and 5 in damage. Obviously, if you get 5s in these two down here, obviously that's just a bonus. But in my opinion, getting 5 in this and this is the most important one. And yes, in case you want to know, the best one that you can get is 5 in everything. But yeah, again, apart from that, there's not really much that this world has to offer. So we're going to move on to the Bazaar Town. Also, keep in mind, there is an upgrades machine over here, which you can use coins to upgrade stuff, such as more energy, more damage more walk speed so if i you definitely focus on this more than the devil contracts because those are just more concrete you're, you're literally getting pluses and not any negatives in return so yeah do that now there are two things in the bizarre town that are really important number one the supreme machine again you won't really need to focus much on this because again by the time you even have enough elites to make a supreme you've probably gone up a world or two and then you know obviously the supremes become useless but it is really important late game because you know even for example my full team of hold on because for some reason the wrong thing opened uh, my full team of shinies over here, my shiny mythicals, they're not really that good. As in, they are helping me progress, but I need to get, like, supremes if I want to make any progress. But anyways, we move on to the upgrades guy over here, who offers the same things, except crit damage and crit chance, that's new. Again, focus mostly your money on these, because you, it's just gonna help you out a ton. Especially when you max out all of the upgrades machines, because there are practically, like, six of them. But yeah, again, you just want to continue the normal strategy, just continue the quest line, upgrade your classes, upgrade your swords, everything. And then we move on to the hollow dimension, and this is where probably progression is going to become a bunch easier. Number one, there is a special exchange over here where you can exchange certain tokens for other tokens. For example, if you want to, you know, get more skill spins and then you have, let's say, the best passive that you can get, you can just exchange them here. And obviously that's going to be really, really good, especially if you're trying to get a mythical spin or a really good passive or whatever. But then this over here, the training area. This is going to give you times two energy and trust me, this area is going to stay super important until the end of the game. In my opinion, I would suggest just AFKing here, like for a few hours. Even if the moment you entered this world, you were somehow able to one-shot practically all of the enemies, still stay here for a few hours. So then that way, you'd have a ton of energy built up. So then again, if you can't instantly beat this world, it will end up being a breeze. And even the next one, which is going to be the Academy Zone. Now, the Academy Zone is where things kind of scale up quite a bit. You're probably going to struggle on this world the most than most of the others. And there's only really one thing over here, the Upgrades 3. And again, it has all the usual stuff. And again, I'm going to heavily recommend you max this out as soon as possible. Now, you may end up spending quite a few hours hours or a few days on this world but don't worry things will immediately change once you get to the xyz province and in my opinion i think this is what marks the end of the early game now yes before you end up spamming me in the comments or my dms or whatever that you know there are 30 worlds would it make sense that maybe you know end of early game would be like world 15 or something well no i would heavily disagree because there is something here no it's not the defense mode 2 we'll get to that in the second that is going to be so helpful that it's going to have an effect until like world 21 or 22. And that's going to be the hero test. Basically how this works is every 5 minutes the hero test is going to begin and it's going to last 5 minutes. So basically it's like 5 minutes on, 5 minutes off. And every second at the very beginning you're going to be getting plus 1 XP. Now don't worry this isn't forever, the XP does kind of stack. So every 50k XP that you get, you get plus 1 per second. So that means... Uh, before 50k XP, you're getting plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Then after 50k XP, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And then every single time you hit 50k, so then 50k, then, as I said, it's plus 2. Then 100k plus 3, 150k plus 4, and so on. And as far as I know, this goes on forever. But if I'm not mistaken, the maximum hero XP that you need is only a million. I'm pretty sure they said someone in the Discord where, you know, you don't need to go above a million because it's useless. But anyways, what can you get from the hero test? Well, 
There are going to be ranks in the hero test and it's going to say down here. So the next rank is let's say Y-5 and then it says required XP is 50k for example. And these hero ranks are going to be giving you so OP multipliers. In my opinion, forget everything. Forget completing this world like fighting the enemies and whatnot. Forget just literally pretend like the rest of the game does not exist. Just focus all your time on AFKing on nothing else but this hero test. Yes, you may say that 75k x energy, 75k x damage, and 30k x souls is probably not that much, especially once you upgrade your swords and ranks a few times. It's going to be saying like the next one's going to be like 10 qu quintillion or something. But no, don't fall for it. Here, let me just give you a general idea of how OP that is. That max rank over there, which took around five to six days of afk to get yes it's going to take quite a while to max it out but trust me it's going to be worth it you're going to go from being able to one hit everything in world 13 to being able to one hit everything in world 21 or 22 trust me it is ridiculous you literally cannot progress any further okay you can afk on the hero test till you max it out and within an hour you'll go from world 13 to world 21 i don't know why it is that op but it is i promise you but anyways as i said this is going to be the end of today's guide don't worry i'm going to be having another guide up maybe the next video that you see in a few days for late game players now keep in mind obviously i am not at the end of this game there's still quite a lot left to grind out but i still think that i can offer some good tips and tricks just things that i've learned along the way of my new to pro series which if you haven't already checked out i I definitely recommend you do but anyways until then i'll see you all in the next one peace out